Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sheep need a shepherd, and the Lord provides. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What beautiful words that have inspired great hymns and even countless stained glass windows throughout the world. After the cross, it's hard to think of a picture of Jesus' ministry that, that gives and evokes more of a sense of, of who he is, the good shepherd. Now, if we think of this, we might set the sheep against a sea of deep, green grass of rich blue sky and white puffy clouds it's an idyllic and calming image image of an ordered and a peaceful life but that's not the whole story the fact is that there are many dangers to those nearly helpless sheep sheep need shepherds I think of it, I, I don't know that I've ever heard of wild sheep, of bands of sheep roaming the countryside and, and harassing hikers. No football team I can think of would ever be named the Fighting Lambs. Scattered sheep, scattered sheep are doomed. And so the Lord laments in Ezekiel, saying, they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. In the book of Ezekiel, God files his complaint against the kings and priests of Israel. They were to feed, to protect, to lead the children of Israel in the Lord's pleasant pastures. But instead, they led them into false worship. Now, they didn't usually completely deny the true God, but they allowed the people to worship both the true God and false gods. These kings and priests didn't love the Lord or his flock. They loved themselves. They loved fitting in with the spirituality of their day. They loved the income and the earthly peace that they thought would be theirs by embracing the sins and the self-made salvations that surrounded their little land. And the poor sheep were scattered and destroyed. The Lord spoke in his full righteous wrath, that is saying, Behold, I am against the shepherds. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths that they may not be food for them. And the Lord God gave a most merciful promise. Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. And the Lord appointed himself shepherd of his people. As David taught us to sing, the Lord is my shepherd. This beautiful promise is fulfilled in Christ Jesus the Lord in our flesh who rescues us. Surely the king of love my shepherd is, for he lay down his life for the sheep. He leads his sheep. He never, ever forsakes his flock. Now first the Lord, the good shepherd, lays down his life for the sheep. Come down from heaven to save us. Jesus is not a deserter. He doesn't cut and run to save his own skin when the fight gets tough. He doesn't let the satanic lion and the demon-driven dog sink their teeth into the flock. Instead, Jesus puts himself in the lion's mouth and lets the dog surround and corner him. He suffered for us. He purposefully was betrayed, mocked, scourged, crucified, and damned. He made himself a silent, uncomplaining lamb in our place. As St. Peter confessed, when, we when he was reviled, 
he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Jesus suffered without threatening and was reviled without reviling back because he was bearing our consequences for wandering away. He got what a lone, isolated, scattered sheep deserved. The Lord had promised through Ezekiel, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Thick darkness, indeed the darkest day, a Friday that we call good. For your good shepherd delivered you by delivering himself into death. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And the good shepherd leads his sheep. The good shepherd calls his sheep and they follow his voice. Now, of course, a dead shepherd doesn't help all that long. Soon the wolf's stomachs are empty. But your good shepherd not only lays down his life, but he takes it up again. He rises from the dead to lead you. And sheep have impeccable hearing. Multiple flocks merged together at night can then be separated in the morning simply by the shepherd's call. And this is what Jesus taught in our gospel reading today, speaking of himself as the shepherd. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus leads you by his voice. He first tenderly taught you to recognize his voice at your baptism. Through the word and the blessed sacrament of the altar, he continues to teach you and to lead you through this sinful world by his voice. But you must learn to distinguish his voice, the word of Holy Scripture, from the cacophony of loud and luring voices of our day. His voice calls you to repentance, to the anointing of your head with the oil of holy baptism, to feed on the lush pastures of his word and at the table of his life-giving flesh and blood spread before you, even while Satan, sin, and death surround. Notice in Psalm 23 that all the important actions are the shepherd's work, not yours. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads. He restores. He leads. But watch out. There are wolves and thieves aplenty who would teach you that holy baptism is your work instead of God's, something that you do to show yourself to be a sheep, rather than the brand of the good shepherd being put on you to mark you as his, as if a sheep could ever brand itself. And there are those who want to teach you that the Lord's Supper is not the table of the good shepherd's body and blood, but a symbolic supper by which we think fondly of what Jesus has done, as if a sheep could feed itself. And there are those who would turn you inward, turn you inward to your own believing, to your piety, to your feelings, to your works, to yourself, and away from Jesus and his blood-bought gifts, as if a sheep could shepherd itself. And there are those who tell you that receiving Jesus' work isn't enough to save. You must have enough love 
and do enough good to make it to heaven, as if a sheep could defeat the lion itself. And there are those who tell you that they can give you success, popularity, wealth, and health if you just say their prayer repeatedly and you follow their rules. As if a sheep could turn himself into a sleek and successful sheep. Flee from these voices. Do not follow them. That's what Christ says. As Martin Luther wrote, If you wish, therefore, to be richly supplied in both body and soul, then above all give careful attention to the voice of this shepherd. Listen to the word. Let him feed, direct, lead, protect, and comfort you. That is, hold fast to his word. Hear and learn it gladly, for then you will be supplied in both body and soul. The good shepherd leads us. And the good shepherd never forsakes his flock. David, who faced death many times over, calls us to pray. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But there are times when you might feel abandoned. Why would a caring shepherd lead me through the valley of the shadow of death? Why would the death of a dear one cast a shadow over me? Why does my own death loom before me as a dark cloud? Is it that the shepherd has left me? Is it because of my sin or my failure? No. No, he is not punishing you. And no, he has not failed to care for you. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Jesus is with us, with us even and especially in death. He went through it first for you to open the way to life. And Jesus is with us in mourning. He wept at Lazarus' tomb. And Jesus is your good shepherd who also comes to comfort you. He sends goodness and mercy to nip joyfully at your heels. He leads you right into his house, into his house here today, and will keep you and follow him in his house forever. Sheep that are separated from the flock are easy pickings for poachers. And so Christians don't go it alone. That would be against the very voice of the good shepherd. And experience teaches that people without a congregation tend to believe a little bit of everything. And so in truth, they wind up believing in nothing at all. Sheep who don't learn the voice of their shepherd will soon follow any voice. And outside the church, outside the church it is cold and it is deadly. There is no forgiveness, no life at all. But here in the Lord's congregation, here the Lord restores the joy of salvation to your soul. The Lord brings you back rejoicing. He binds up your wounds. The Lord guides you in his righteous way. And the Lord is with you and comforts you even under the dark shadow of death. Because of your good shepherd's boundless, selfless love received by faith that he supplies, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in our good shepherd, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen.